Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Jackknife TV. If you like the content I'm putting out, if you want, or if you could, if you go down there and hammer that like button and uh, smash subscribe for me. Uh, it really helps the channel out. Keeps me motivated to keep making videos because uh, lately I just haven't been, you know, it's scheduling and, and you know, balancing between home and, and, and this. It's just been... Uh, Testing, I guess you could say. It's been very testing. Um, the video, what I'm going to try to talk about today is pretty much like winter preparedness, which apparently I'm not. I should have, uh, <laughs> I, I, I should have probably bought air brake antifreeze, which I usually do with a lot of my older equipment that I've always had. I usually put two or three bottles in a truck. But since I have a newer truck, the air dryer actually works. Um, I didn't do that and technically it wasn't necessarily moisture built up in the system uh, you know the air dryers work and everything the problem I had is Friday and Saturday night we got torrential downpours of rain uh, here in Pennsylvania and I parked the truck in the morning and you know my lines were hung up and everything but even though even though there's a rubber grommet on the on the uh, service and emergency line on the back of the truck you know the water still somehow drips down and gets into the line and ended up filling up my service line with water. Which then we ended up having a hard freeze, like uh, probably Saturday night or whatnot. And it's been in, it's been in the teens ever since. Uh, and wind chill is probably negative five or whatnot. <laughs> so I get the truck running. I go to pick up my load. Uh, what was this? Uh, I guess Sunday. Sunday Sunday evening and uh, I, I I hook up the trailer and everything and I check the brakes because I always do you know brake tests and everything and I don't have no I don't have no trailer brakes the service line was completely frozen so that's what you're gonna see here after after I get done you know trying to fill everything in I just didn't have enough I don't know enough will to record me freaking out at, at Tyson when I was picking up the trailer and everything. I mean, I did record, but I, I left big pieces out. So this is me just trying to make up for, for you know, my lack of vid vid videoing skills, I guess you could say. Uh, it's a totally different day now. I think it's what? Today is uh, Wednesday. Yeah. No, no today's Tuesday because the snowstorm came Monday. Today's Tuesday. I dropped the kids off. Uh, they had a two hour delay. I'm going to finally get out of here. I got to go up to New York. Uh, I think the Walmart DC in Johnstown, I think it is, Johnstown, New York. So I'm going to go head up there. But what I'm going to talk about real quick right now is, you know, being prepared. Uh, even if you're in the Northeast or whatnot, or if you're down South, eventually you're going to come up into this weather. Uh, have air brake antifreeze. I would suggest two bottles if they're small bottles. If they're a the bigger bottle one bottle but I would still keep two anyway uh, a mini torch like one of those little propane torches you can pick up at Walmart or or Lowe's or whatnot at the least you know self igniters preferably one where you have to hold the button down so if you let go of the button it shuts off just in case you know you, you drop it or whatnot it doesn't burn you it doesn't set the truck on fire uh, that's that's good for like Applying some heat to your, you know, the center part of your, not, not, not anything near the, uh, well, I'm trying to think, not anything near where the rubber grommets sit inside the, uh, brake canisters. Uh, but like the center part of the brake canister, if you got, uh, moisture build up or water in there and it's not letting the, the canister let go, you try warming it up, warming it up, not cherry red, tapping on it with a nice little sledgehammer. Keep a small little sledgehammer, like from Harbor Bay Freight in the truck. Uh, the same thing too, you can warm up your uh, shoes, if you got drum brakes, uh, warm up the actual drums, and then you take the hammer and you hit the hit the actual drum, not your shoes, you don't want to mess up your shoes or hit any adjustments or anything like that, you just want to hit the drum, and what you're listening for is you're listening for like a ring, like a bell, when it rings like a bell, that means your brakes have let, let go of the drum and they're not frozen to the drum anymore, so... If you hear that ring automatically, it means that that brake drum isn't frozen. Um, so just go around and do that. Now, on your tractor, remember, if you, when you have your brakes set, your brakes are going to be set against the drum. Uh, but, I mean, I'm talking usually the trailer is what freezes up. So really keep the tractor brakes set. 
release your trailer brakes, and then go around the trailer and do that if you, if you can't get the trailer to move. Uh, the same thing too, air brake antifreeze. Uh, you know, I think I, basically I show you after this uh, montage of me going on here, you're gonna see me put air brake antifreeze in my service in my emergency line. Uh, what else? Uh, keep plenty of blankets, plenty of warm clothes, food. You never know if you're gonna get stuck in a blizzard. Uh, I even mentioned about keeping fuel uh, and your DEF tank full. Uh, at least half a tank, if not more, every time you go anywhere into any kind of cold winter weather. You don't want to freeze to death by, because you ran out of fuel because you kept the truck on a quarter tank or whatnot and got stuck. Um, you know, there's some guys been sitting for two or three days, four days out there in uh, Montana, uh, Wyoming and everything right now. Even at the truck stops, they're sitting. And the truck stops are having a hard time getting plowed out there just there just isn't enough manpower and then you're sitting there so you might not even be able to get the truck over to the fuel pumps to get fuel so remember that uh let's see anything else i want to add in here real quick eventually when it warms up and it's not windy outside and it's not like negative five i'm not freezing my balls off <laughs> i'll probably grab a torch and, and a hammer and at least kind of show you what to, what to do like this is for newer guys most of you old season guys already know know you know what you got to do um also i'm going to say this too because a lot of guys don't don't keep chains on i know a lot of guys do not keep tire chains on i don't i don't have tire chains on this truck and uh i gotta buy a new set because i have 24s and these are 22s but always keep tire chains on you and maybe even a chain because i do have chain i have a 5 16s chain if you 516 chain you can keep or maybe even a really heavy duty go on amazon get a heavy duty recovery uh rope i'm talking about like 30 40 thousand pound one uh you know if you need pulled out if, if you can get a fellow driver to actually come over and help you it'll save you lots of time and lots of money um always try to take care of yourself and don't be stupid when you're hooking up don't hook up to your bumper hook up to like the frame like the actual frame um you know where you're uh these springs hook into the frame you can you know wrap around that you just got to be careful when it pulls and don't pull up on the bumper uh you can use the hooks you actually thread the hooks in all the way or or well some of them actually some of them are pins so you just put the pins in and put the hooks on just use common sense don't do nothing stupid if you're going to pull yourself out or have someone pull you out or pull somebody else out uh, you know don't make a situation even worse and the same thing like i said keep tire chains on you because even if you're in the northeast or whatnot, there are times where you're going to really wish you had tire chains just to just to get through, you know, that part of wherever you are on the road or get you off the road. Uh, you know, especially out here in Pennsylvania and stuff, you're you're gonna you know you you're gonna want you're gonna want tire chains. You know, you're gonna want them. Uh, other than that, that, that's just me quickly trying to fill in the blanks here in this video. So I'm gonna edit this all together and throw it out there. So I hope. I hope I'm teaching you guys or, or at least saving some people, maybe even saving some people's lives here, just trying to make this real quick video. Eventually, I don't know, I'd like to put something out a little bit better, uh, better content, better professionalism, if you want to call it that, like not just so thrown together half-assed, because that's really what I'm doing right now. I just, I just don't have time, I don't have time. I, uh... You know, I'm either spending time with the family or digging out, you know, digging out from the snow now, or I'm, my my schedule with uh, the loads and the runs are so ridiculous, I gotta, I gotta be sleeping all the time, or I'm getting woken up for lumpers, or this and that and that. So that's what's what's going on right now. So enjoy whatever this video is gonna become, and, uh, you know, thanks for stopping by. And, and like I said, don't take, don't take cold temperatures in winter lightly it will kill you it will kill you i i've been out plenty of times in like north dakota and stuff tarping and strapping in the winter time when you know the straps are frozen salt you're using uh de-icer to unfreeze the straps and stuff like that you know uh where i had to go in every five or ten minutes or i was going to get frostbite easily like that um and then you know tarping and everything else so don't just like i said don't take winter lightly it will kill you let alone the driving and everyone and the other other truck drivers out there lately. Uh, just you know, keep a, have a plan. Keep stuff in the truck. Keep chains, even if you don't really necessarily need chains. 
uh, it'll save you a lot of money, a lot of time, and maybe even your life, you know, so, all right, well, watch the video, enjoy, uh, jackknife out. So, I don't know if you can hear me right now, because the Reaper decided to kick on, this guy's truck's running, my truck's running, but here's what we're going to do, so, always, always keep a, you know, a bottle of this stuff, so this is air brake in it, freeze. now, there's, other kinds out there like CRC and uh, there's this one uh, just a generic brand you can pick them up at the truck stop it's a lot cheaper if you get it from AutoZone or Walmart or whatnot usually you can't find them in Walmart but sometimes you can it just depends on the area you're in but pretty much this will not a lot of guys say this will hurt your dryer and stuff and whatnot I've never heard never read in a manual to not use air brake antifreeze all the all the products and everything on the back here there's uh directions you can fill evaporator jar two-thirds with uh, the the air brake antifreeze when a compressor is operating so you want to do it while the truck's running usually or what i do is i fill these uh back lines here you know your red and blue line i fill them up and then i hook them up to the trailer runs it through the trailer runs it through your your uh system and uh, you know, you pretty much don't have any problems, at least with the air brakes freezing. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna run this through the, uh, the air brakes, and I'm also gonna show you something too. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, it was raining uh, Saturday uh, night, Saturday morning, oh, so yeah, Saturday night, Saturday morning. And uh, when you have your lines hooked up on your truck, they tend to fill with water. So I'm gonna show you something right now, a problem that I'm, I'm having. And that's one reason why I have this right now in my hand, I'm gonna put it in. So you look right here, I got the blue line. You see that in there? That is ice. That is ice. When these are hanging up, water will still run down here and it'll drip into these lines and it'll freeze up. So if you were ever coming out of somewhere warm, it's, uh, or maybe it rained a day earlier and it's supposed to get cold, always pull these lines out and just lay them on your step facing down. Or even that, lay them down and put a, uh, and put your uh, bungee cord over them. Now, if you have them like that and you're driving around and it's raining, of course you're gonna get water still up in these lines. That's why I said, pull them off, lay them down like that when you're done and you know bungee cord them. So the water drains out of these lines. As you can see, I got ice sitting in there. So really technically I don't have trailer brakes right now. They're very, uh, we'll just say, they're very delayed, extremely delayed. So I'm gonna use some of this uh, air brake antifreeze I'm going to tr attempt to fill this line up. I'm going to fill the, the red line up, the emergency line up. And uh, we're going to, we're basically going to see if this lets go. Also, what you should do is you should always keep a torch in this situation, which I used to. But, you know, brand new truck. You know, uh, I, I just, I just, you know, just assume that I probably wouldn't have problems with frozen brakes. But, hey, when they're here and they fill up with water, and then the next day it gets extremely cold and they freeze, Hey, that's what's gonna happen. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna put some air brake antifreeze in both lines, and uh, we're gonna see if this frees up. I can see it bubbling in there. It's it's working its way down in there. So, like I said, you should always probably keep a torch on you for these situations. Uh, I do have a mini little mini torch in there for lighting cigars, so I might take that out and warm this up a little bit if that doesn't work. Also, to remind you, this stuff is flammable, so don't don't take the torch after you you know after you just use this stuff because uh, well you know it's, it'll catch on fire at least right here. It's pretty much a, there's like an alcohol base formula in here, maybe an ethylene glycol. I don't know. I could read through everything that's in here. There's all kinds of stuff in there. But there's also agents in there to prevent wear and uh, I don't know something in there. It says something to take care of your take care of the rubber in your system. You, you know, yada yada yada. I'm gonna say that's pretty uh, that's pretty frozen up. So we're gonna uh, I'm gonna probably take that little mini torch I got and see if I can use that. But this one should take this one should take fluid because obviously the trail brakes disconnect. Like I said, you just fill this up. I usually use half the bottle. Usually what I do in the wintertime is I keep two or three bottles in here. So I usually use half the bottle on each line. Well, actually this is a pretty big bottle. I might just use half the bottle, just split it between the two. Sometimes these bottles are a little bit smaller. 
Now a lot of it I'm dripping, but you should take your time doing this because you want to say you want to get as much of it in the system as you can. And when it gets on your hands, like I said, it's like a like an alcohol. It's freaking cold, especially with this like 30 or 40 mile an hour wind coming through here. Alright, that should be enough for that line. I'm gonna put that line back up. Just like that. And I'm gonna go grab the little mini torch. See if I can't get that ice out of that line. All right, so I got my little mini torch I used for my cigars. So we're gonna to try to warm this up here with this tiny little torch here. Preferably, you would want a real torch. Usually, what I would kept would be a protein torch, one of the ones with the button on it. So when you let go of it, it's still not lit and burns your truck to the ground. All right, it doesn't help that there's a hell of a lot of wind here, even for this little torch. All right, so I got a little bit of it to go down. As you can see, there's no ice there anymore. We're using that little, that little torch lighter, but there's still ice in this line. It's probably down to about here. So I just took a pair of vice grips and I started clamping the, clamping the wall line, trying to break up some of the ice. So I got to feed some, of, some of it down. So what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna apply the uh, trailer brakes, the trolley brake, I should say and uh, see if we can't get any ice to come out of here. So I'm gonna just leave this. All right, so I heard some air coming out of there and it bubbling. So it looks like it's gonna get broken free. So I'm gonna fill this up with antifreeze. Well, you know, the air break antifreeze. I'm gonna see if I can't keep it to keep keep it feeding down into the into the hose. And then I'm gonna put the the grommet back in and we're gonna stick it back up there and hopefully it lets go. But at least I have some air coming through there, which I didn't All have right, before. My suggestion, like I said, probably keep about two bottles of air break antifreeze in your truck. And like I said, what I do, depending on the size of the bottle, if it's a smaller bottle. I usually split it up half and half, half in the red, you know, half in the mercy, and then the other half in the blue, which is the service side. And you just hold the hoses up and you, you feed it through at the top, let it drain in, and you just put them back on there, and then you use the bla use the brakes for a while. Uh, this is something you wanna do probably at the end of your shift, you know, while the uh, air is still warm in the system and, uh, you know, everything's going. So at the end of your shift, I would, I would add it in and then use the brakes liberally, you know, do a couple brake checks with the brake, uh, the trailer brake off and the uh, tractor brake off, apply the brakes a couple of times just to let that, that antifreeze work through the entire system. And you should be good to go at night. But uh, here in a little bit, I guess when I get where I got to be going, I'm going to show you a few other tricks. Uh, what you can do is if maybe let's say your brake shoes are locked up and you need to get your brake shoes to release um, It would help if I had a torch to show you, you know, maybe how to properly or at least safely use a torch uh, To release your brakes when it you know when it gets really cold But uh, I don't so this is uh, what we're working with right now And uh, I'm hoping this is gonna help you guys out So we're gonna uh, we're gonna leave this TA here right now and uh, get going down the road and I'll show you the rest in a little bit so real quick i'm going to show you so i have a trolley brake right here so all the brakes are released so here's how we can see if our service brakes are frozen well took a little bit but at least there's air actually getting to the trailer brakes now so we can actually we can actually stop the trailer and the truck with the trailer brakes so they're at least working a little bit so i'm going to drive for a little while and we're going to see how well they work when I get to uh, to my actual fuel stop, because right here we're at the Petro here in Scranton, um, I'm actually going to get fuel in the TA there in Newburgh. So we're going to get going down the road, and uh, I'll show you some more tips and tricks about uh, frozen brakes. Right, another real quick winter tip. So with these pack cars, especially since I had problems with the injectors last year, pack car recommended, well, almost required, for you to put power service in your truck now this isn't the injector one this is you can see it's the winterized anti-gel and then it says you know the lubricating factor and everything else to protect pumps and injectors 
Well, if you read the back and you compare it to the injector cleaner one, it pretty much has the same exact ingredients, except for the fact it has the anti-gel and everything. So I'm gonna start treating the tanks this winter with this a few times to make sure I don't have any injector problems, even though these are the updated injectors in this pack car. Um, I, I don't wanna have to sit you know, three or four days for them to replace all the injectors again. So that being said, uh, you know, if you have an older truck or, you know, you experience really cold temperatures, like especially if you're out in Wyoming on 80 and uh, Montana and all that, you're definitely going to want to put anti-gel in your truck. Me personally, I know there's house, but I would rather just put this in because it does the injectors and everything else. Uh, it cleans and lubricates the pump and everything. So that's just me personally. Uh, but, you know, on the other hand, uh, if you want to use Hal's and that's what you're used to, go ahead and use it. I don't care. One other thing is I also like to put this stuff in first. So let's open her up. Oh, wow, they actually made it so you pull the lid off. Now me, I don't let these fly away. I actually throw them out, so I'm going to hold that there. So I'm going to do half of this in this tank, which is going to be a real pain in the butt. There we go. So I'm gonna put half in this tank and half in the other tank. And then when I fill it, it'll mix it in the tank. Also, real quick note, when you buy Power Service Clean, I would recommend you buy it at Walmart or you buy it at Bulk somewhere. Definitely don't buy it at the truck stop. It's $42 for that bottle now. So that's just a real quick side note. Here's another winter tip that, you know, seems frivolous, but it might save your life. Uh, who knows? Always keep at least a half a tank to a, to a full tank of DEF and fuel in your truck. All right, especially if you're one of those guys running Wyoming, Montana, and everything, you know, not only will it add extra traction because there'll be extra weight on the drives, but it might actually save your life, especially if you get stuck in a blizzard or something, or you're stuck at a truck stop for a few days and you can't even get out to go get fuel. Uh, at least you're gonna be nice, warm, and toasty in your truck and you're not gonna freeze to death out in the middle of nowhere. So that's, uh, that's another winter tip, I guess, right there. So we're gonna pull out of this TAE here and, uh, yeah, I gotta get going. <laughs>